So Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, has been in something of hot water because um, he came out with quite a scathing attack on the SNP, saying that they represent the same sort of division as um, Donald Trump and other populist right-wing factions. Um, he's now scaled back somewhat. Apparently this was in the context of um, he's going to be speaking to the Labour Party conference in Scotland with Kezia Dugdale. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Mr Khan's only mistake is in scaling back because I think he was spot on the first time. Um, and I want to address this point because uh, I was looking at the sort of responses on The Guardian and so on and the sort of thing that nationalists were saying and a lot of the comments were like, oh, we don't hear English people. Um, and some of them were from English people who were saying, I live in Scotland and I never experienced hatred and bigotry and so on. Here's the thing about Scottish nationalism. Um, of course, not every nationalist hates the English. Um, I don't think that is the case. And um, indeed, there are nationals who know how to be um, diplomatic and inclusive and so on in terms of the language, at least on forums that are neutral. Um, as far as I know, The Guardian is not a pro-independence paper. Um, but if you look at nationalist forums, there is unquestionably real sectarian bile in those forums. And if people think I'm exaggerating, I just ask you to look at them. I mean, the general mentality is that uh, Scottish Labour people are traitors. Um, any unionist is a traitor. And there is this inherently arrogant notion that nationalists and nationalists alone are Scotland. So I saw people, uh, and this is really driving me crazy because it was so absurd, interpreting Mr Khan's remarks as an attack on the Scottish people. So it's this perverse distorting and conflating of Scotland equals the SNP. Sadiq Khan was not attack attacking Scotland, he was attacking the SNP. Big difference. That's as absurd as saying attacks on the Conservative Party are the same as attacking the English. It's absurd. So it's this deliberate distortion that the Nationals are putting out there that Sadiq Khan is attacking Scotland. It's their typical div divisive rhetoric. Um, I think he was spot on because I have seen this firsthand. I've experienced it firsthand. I remember on Independence well, Referendum Day, um, God, I almost said Independence Day. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this guy, I got into a bit of a verbal confrontation with this guy um, and he said, which part of Scotland are you from? And I said, well, actually, I'm not from Scotland. And he spat on the ground and walked away. Now, he didn't assault me. There was no, you know, I don't want to exaggerate. There was, I didn't feel particularly intimidated, but it was an unpleasant atmosphere that day. And in my opinion, ever since the referendum in 2014, there has been an undercurrent of sectarianism in Scotland. And in my opinion, it is increasing every time the SNP push for referendum after referendum after referendum. I saw a funny meme recently. It said, um, <laughs> Mrs Sturgeon, can you give us a date for Indy Ref 3, Indy Ref 4, Indy Ref 5? Because that is what they're going to do. When this one fails, they will find some reason to get Indy Ref 3. When that fails, they'll find a reason to get Indy Ref 4. Now, the big thing at the moment is about this EU referendum and the fact that most Scots voted remain. But the fact remains that more Scots voted to stay in the United Kingdom in 2014 on a higher turnout. That referendum had a higher turnout than Scots who voted to stay in the EU. And here's the thing. I, I don't believe in a hard Brexit. I don't support a hard Brexit. I think that would be a mistake. I also believe that there should be compromise in so far as there should be some areas where devolved governments can have certain trade agreements um, or certain, certain um, let's say, flexibility with, uh, with dealings with, other, with our EU neighbours. I'm all for that. What I am not for is these constant threats of basically holding this country to ransom, give us what we want 
or we'll break away. The people of Scotland made their decision three years ago. And okay, some of those people may have changed their mind now, but the SNP basically operates on the grounds that their core agenda is independence. I, I honestly believe that they are party that have no values except independence. So they present themselves as this really progressive social democratic party. If being conservative helped them get independent independence, the SNP would be conservative. This is a party that is based solely on independence. It's in their name, the Scottish National Party. But what I really tire of is separate is implying that all Scots think alike when they're interacting with other Britons. So when they're talking to um, when they're talking on British newspaper forums like nationwide British forums, they always talk about the Scottish people like it's one unit. Um, and yet when it's on Scottish forums, it's always us and them. Like, we are the people of Scotland, the new unionists are traitors. Go back to England, you Labour bastards. I'm not exaggerating. This is exactly what I've seen on nationalist forums. The SNP is actually moderate compared to some of the more extreme factions, such as Wings Over Scotland and other groups. And these people are so wrapped up in self-pity, and this, this dangerous combination of intense victimhood with intense hatred. That's a dangerous combination because it then leads to distortion. It leads to sectarianism because they perceive, they have this perception that there's this big overbearing Westminster threat, even though most of Scotland's major policy areas are devolved matters that are actually um, the jurisdiction of the Scottish devolved government. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I think Sadiq Khan was absolutely right. I think his only mistake is in scaling back. He should stick to his guns. He was absolutely right the first time. Does that mean every Scottish nationalist is a racist? No. But, you know, for with them getting all defensive, what I would say to them is, OK, you may not be a racist, you may not hate the English personally, but your party has sectarian undercurrents. And there is no way to escape. If you if you are not racist, if you are not sectarian in nature, I want to see those moderate nationalists condemn the sectarians, condemn those who are saying that if you don't vote in the two, you're a traitor. I haven't seen it. So they can cry and whinge about this, but that is they're entirely responsible for their own negative perception.